All right. Polar vortex out there. So what a day to get a little bit heady and uh, dive into a little uh, evolutionary science. Apply it to our relationships and our ideas and our principles, okay? So, because, and I made this case in a previous video, and I suggest that you, uh, excuse me, go check it out. I made a very good video. I usually don't say my videos are good, but I let the audience decide, but I am going to say this one is, uh, in regards to uh, cheating, and uh, it kind of explains about an hour long, so it's long, but it explains the history and the reasons and the drives behind cheating and it's not what you think so get out of your paradigm in your box and go watch it and open up your mind a little bit and and realize what's going on you can't really pursue or have happiness if you don't you're not armed with all the information okay that would be a potential obstacle to getting what you want right so yeah go go look at that video but now we're going to talk about monogamy at all because I talk about monogamy in a lot of my videos because our society doesn't really promote it. Um, a lot of individuals do for sure, religious communities do, but by and large society is more promoting a polygamous strategy. And uh, what we have right now is the social construct side of the monogamy colliding with our genetic drive for polygamy. And so what you actually have is polygamy disguised as monogamy which is basically people committing to relationships, getting into marriages, and then at some point executing polygamist strategies uh, to escape from the confines of their monogamous relationship. And then, of course, it eventually ends in divorce or what have you most of the time, and then uh, they start again. Okay. So, we're, we're a bit broken as a society because we're not aware of what's going on with us and our drives and the reasons why things are there and then how to, you know, work with reality and work with our drives in order to get what we want. But it does beg the question, though, why do monogamy in the first place, all right? Now, there's personal reasons why. That's a topic for another video, but I want to get into some societal stuff, okay? Because there seems to be a... Um, idea that's being promoted out there that Western culture is bad, Christianity is really bad, and monogamy is a social construct. And it's all of the, you know, uh, all of the uh, oppressive, oppressive nature of the church, the oppressive nature of men against women, that's created this false idea of monogamy, and really we're meant to be out there having sex with everybody, right? That's kind of the the idea that's being promoted. Um, and I want to challenge that when you look at anthropology. See, because it, the, and I, when I talk like in my last video about tribal cultures, people have this, I forget that people have this false idea when I talk about it, that people have this false idea of um, the myth of the uh, utopian tribal um, environment, where that these tribes were like these little city-states of utopian ideals where everyone got along and was happy, there wasn't any violence, everyone fucked everyone, everyone took care of everyone, it was just like this wonderful ideal. And it wasn't a savage, harsh place to be in a savage, harsh environment. People don't, they forget that, you know, they, they, they think it's like the movie uh, Pocahontas or something, I don't know, where, I don't know, they, they think that they have this, this fantasy of what it is, you know what I mean? Hopefully my dog will shut up eventually. I'm going to punch him. <laughs> Not really. So anyway, let me dispel the fantasy for you. If you go into, there's a number of things written in anthropology about this, but if you go, a really good book that just came out not too long ago, I've uh, been working through, it's called Sapiens. The title is Sapiens by uh, Yuval Noah Harari. Um, there's a chapter, I want to say it's like chapter three, where they talk about the uh, Ache Achea tribe um, in Paraguay. Now, they were a tribe that were intact until about 1960s, so anthropologists had an opportunity to go there, observe them, interview them, actually, you know, could 
manage to communicate linguistically with them. Um, the uh, and they got a lot of interesting information because they were a hunt, intact hunter and gatherer tribe. They had a hunter gatherer um, society, much like we did, you know, prior to the agricultural revolution. All right. Why did they have that? I mean, that's I don't want to make this a super long video, but of course they're in Paraguay in a jungle. Resources are plentiful in that area, so there was no need or push for an agricultural revolution so much. So they stayed hunter-gatherers, okay? Um, so I'll give you some excerpts from it, from my notes. Um, I have it on audiobook, otherwise I'll just read it. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, hunter-gatherer tribe, so when, a, when, a, when a, uh, a member of the tribe died, okay, they would customarily kill a little girl and bury the little girl and, and the guy together. It had to do with religious beliefs and him basically having a, uh, a woman later on in another life. Okay, So you run into this stuff, right, and to various different degrees with all these tribes. All right. Now, why, of course, that's a religious idea, but why would they have a religious idea? Understand, just like monogamy, a lot of these religious ideas come from, these social constructs come from adaptions. So we adapt and then we rationalize these religious ideas and these social constructs didn't just develop out of thin air. There's an adaptive strategy that happens. We as a, as a human species, as an animal species, the animal part of us, okay, adapts and then from that adaption we rationalize the adaption because we're rational animals so we rationalize it and then in comes a social construct okay usually that's how it kind of works a lot of your religious ideals the same way i'm not i'm not debunking religion or anything i'm just saying you know the rules okay a lot of times come from that so you know in their value system it's cool to kill a little girl when the dude uh, some dude dies and bury them together all right so um, they told a story of a uh, middle-aged man who was sick, okay, and he couldn't keep up with the tribe, so they left him under a tree, okay. Vultures surrounded him, but he was actually able to recover and catch up with the tribe, all right. So he, he was covered in vulture feces, and this is the anthrop anthropologist, um, you know, talking about this account. They had a chance to interview him. And uh, so his nickname became Vulture Droppings. All right. So I, I don't think anti-bullying was a thing in these hunter-gatherer tribes. Here's another uh, anecdote. When a woman was aged or became of no use, as they described, a younger Achea man would sneak up behind her while they were walking or, or going through traveling, and he would kill her with an axe blow to the head. And they interviewed one of the guys who had been who had been the primary guy of this particular tribe to do that. I killed many women, old women, my aunts. They were afraid of me, he had said. But, but now that we are among the whites, I have become weak. All right. Kids and children. Um, if a kid was had any birth defects or any, you know, didn't come out the right gender for what they were looking for, they would kill the kid um, after birth. Um, a man, uh, they, they told of an account of a man who had killed a small boy just because he was angry and the kid was crying. Um, one kid was buried alive because according to the tribe account, they were laughing and jokingly saying that the, the, that the child looked funny. And so he looked funny and he was made fun of. So they buried him alive. Okay. This is in the 1960s. Accounts from a actual hunter-gatherer tribe. And they were polygamist. And they were communal. And they took care of each other. So it is not the utopian society that you would think it would be. Okay? The leftists, the socialists, the communists will often point to these societies and say, well, this is how we should be. Understand that the not only the agriculture revolution but enlightenment eras okay and westernized society makes a set of rules and makes things so we value human life christianity even whether you're christian or not has a value to value human life okay so human beings are not treated like animals or disposable objects and polygamists in 
types of mating strategies, normally you're using each other's bodies. And those individuals are not seen quite so much as an intact human being that's valuable. How valuable was the kid who was buried alive that looked funny? How valuable was the woman, the women who are of no use, meaning not sexually viable anymore? They hit the wall, right? So how, how, how valuable were they considered as human beings to be axed, blown to the head, and killed because nobody wanted their vaginas anymore? All right? So this idea, and I see it amongst feminists too, which is interesting because they promote equal equality, right? And women's rights. In a polygamous society, women won't have rights. Okay, not really. Or at least you won't be valued. Because sex and mating becomes a utilitarian strategy and a more or less a hedonistic slash narcissistic ideal. If I don't keep my abs, if I don't keep my build, and if I don't keep my money, I'm not sexually viable. Girls aren't going to want to sleep with me, so forth. Women, you hit the wall, you get a little older, you can get traded up for a 20-year-old or a couple of 20-year-olds. Guess what your 40, 45-year-old husband's going to do in a polygamous society? So, as we can see from account after account, hum it, it, despite the friendly social environment that was often presented in some of these tribes, and the level of violence varies, and if you go into statistics, you can see different tribes had violence from 50% rates of people dying from uh, violence amongst each other to as low as 5%, but generally speaking, the average was about 15%. That means one in five people in hunter-gatherer tribes and in these polygamous societies died from violence from another human being. Human beings were utilitarian. What, this is why we don't like socialism, okay? Um, because it doesn't, it, the individual, the rights of the individual and the values of the individual are not preserved. So if the individual is no longer of use, male or female, remember a man was left Men were more disposable as the females, in fact, until the females were unable to have children anymore. Then the females were disposed of. See, in these hunter-gatherer polygamous societies, you are disposable. And you're only as good as you can provide resources and as you can fuck and as you can throw out babies. And it's my channel. I can swear if I want to. So... <laughs> That is the society that happens. And now that we have moved into, because of abundance, we're moving back towards polygamy. You can see that as evidence of people's just social media behavior. Okay? So, I'm not going to say that there couldn't be a situation where human life is valued and there's some polygamous strategies going on. Okay? I'm not going to make that argument. But... Genetically speaking, evolutionary speaking, that has not happened in our history. Generally speaking, when people are not valued as individuals, it's very easy to not value them as sexual beings. Monogamy means that you're valuing human beings for what they are. When you're with somebody, you're valuing that person for who they are. As a person that is unique enough where you want to, be with that individual and pursue a long-term relationship with them to the exclusion of everyone else, okay? Now, this can lead to bad ideas, too. Ideas like one-itis, where guys will be, male or female, will be stuck on one person, and then if they're discarded, they want to kill themselves because they think, that was the one for me, you know? Like, we get logical fallacies from this, too, so it's not perfect. However, there is, in a monogamous society that religion was backing up for a long time, and still does, kind of. Human life and human beings are valued, okay? So when you pursue your truth and you pursue what kind of relationship you want, you gotta decide for yourself whether you wanna value human life or not. If you're going with a polygamous strategy, you gotta ask yourself, are you pursuing that where, in a way, in a manner where you're valuing human life? Or are you, or are you using people for their utilitarian for your utilitarian desires. 
Yeah, that's a girl. It's a real question. With the more communal we become, the less the less sovereignty sovereignty we be, we give the individual. When we start enforcing rules and values that force that community. All right. So I'll close with that. If anything, I just want to dispel that myth. Okay, polygamy is not a, uto a utopian situation. It's a situation where human life is not valued. Historically, that's just been the way it has been. Now, <clears throat> there's plenty of people who've been monogamous who didn't value human life either. All right? But from an idealistic perspective, though, that's that enlightened idea. All right? So you have to figure yourself out. When I do these videos and I'm telling guys how to get girls, when I'm telling women how to vet out men when I'm telling people how to have better relationships all right when I'm doing those things and advising and I'm talking about human reactions behaviors and how to make things work in your favor I'm just giving you the ammunition you have to decide what values you're gonna have and how you want to apply that you know and I can't decide that for you and I won't touch that very often in these videos I'm not your preacher Okay, I'm here to give you the tools to be successful and achieve your goals. But sometimes you get what you ask for. So some of you guys who are wanting to, you know, sleep with multiple women and live that life, you get what you ask for and there's consequences to that. <coughs> okay, and so just keep that stuff in mind. All right, some of you females or males who want to get your ex back, yeah, I get your ex back. But there's consequence to that. That consequence being you now have your ex back. The same person that maybe didn't work out for a reason, right? So you have to decide what your values are. But I don't want you to promote mythical ideas, okay, about polygamy or monogamy for that matter. I want you to see them for what they are. There are strengths and limitations to each one, okay? So you have to decide or choose what you want to pursue, if you want monogamy, great. I can advise you on that. <clears throat> but you have to decide to what level. I mean to what level is to what kind of outlets are you going to allow. It's your decision. Your decision how you want to run your relationship and what, what standards you're willing to accept. But you're the one who has to set those standards. Just do it from a standpoint of knowledge and knowing what the consequences are and knowing what the drives are. Knowledge is the key to getting what you want. That in action, of course. So, thanks for tuning in.